Well, since the recession started, uh, it's been quite an interesting time for Polycom because our proposition uh, actually lends itself quite well to a recession environment. So video conferencing, audio conferencing, it's all about reducing costs, looking after your carbon footprint, uh, increasing speed of decision making, making things more productive, more efficient, etc. Irrespective of you know, your geographical circumstances. So if you're multi-country, multi-office, then it lends itself particularly well to that sort of environment. So uh, actually what we've been witnessing over particularly the last uh, eight to nine months is uh, still a very continuing strong demand for our products. Uh, so that's one good sign. And uh, the other thing which is a, a kind of change of focus in the leadership is a belief that if we invest now, then we'll come out of the recession uh, very strongly. So uh, we've been experiencing, particularly in the last six months, very strong headcount growth. So we've uh, uh, increased our headcount probably within a mere from about uh, 600 up to about 680 now. And then um, in, in terms of infrastructure as well, we're investing in new offices and uh, new demonstration facilities so customers can actually come in, look, feel, touch, use and abuse you know, the Polycom solutions before deciding whether to invest in it. So the, the key challenge really has been driving uh, growth in that sort of environment and uh, making sure that as an organisation uh, we've got the right structure in place, we've got the right management team there, uh, that we're not losing internal communications and so forth, so keeping everything going. There's been a, a new strategy uh, coincident with a new uh, uh, sales head being appointed in the US. So from a sales strategy point of view, there's a, there's a lot more focus now uh, in terms of certain core strategic initiatives which are global. Uh, but from an HR practice point of view, uh, what we're finding is, is that we're able to um, uh, regionalise things and certain things which were in corporate, for example, the compensation and benefits piece, uh, we, we now have that very much localised. So we used to have compensation and benefits driven out of California. Um, and you know, there's one guy who's in charge of worldwide benefits and when he's got Asia Pacific and Amir in America to look after, you know, the poor guy was up 23 hours a day sort of thing. Uh, we now have uh, a local Amir compensation benefits person who's within the organisation. Uh, so we've now got local expertise, local time zones uh, to help drive us with that. So there's, there's been localisation within HR uh, to support the strategy. From an HR perspective, um, certainly since at the beginning of this year when the recession was a bit heavier, um, I, th I think HR has played a central role. Um, so the company said we've got to tighten up on certain things. Um, so uh, you know, we've played a, a very dynamic part in saying, as an alternative to headcount reductions, for example, what other practical steps can we take? Um, so there's, there's looking at alternatives like reducing travel, which obviously video conferencing plays a good part in. Uh, do we need to have certain worldwide meetings? Uh, can we deliver training remotely rather than shipping everybody around hotels and uh, you know, incurring travel flights and so forth and expenses in that way? So we actually came up with about seven or eight different scenarios uh, in which the company could save money uh, as a precaution uh, rather than a, a, and using that as an alternative to headcount reductions. So I think HR's got a role in understanding what the needs of the business are, uh, you know, what the savings envelope is, and, and then coming up with recommendations for management in terms of how best that can be achieved. Um, Outside of Polycom, obviously that means headcount reductions, then the role of HR is, is doing that in a, as professional and a pragmatic way as possible uh, with the you know, care and sensitivity for the individuals who are impacted. And also from an international perspective, uh, then you've obviously got to make sure that you're doing it within the, you know, the, the laws of the land, as it were, because making people redundant in France is a whole heap different than Germany than a whole heap different than the UK. It's always a challenge, yeah, particularly in uh, multi-country environments. So uh, I've got responsibility for 17 territories, for example, and uh, each one has its own way of doing things, open local language, own local contracts, own legal jurisdiction, own major benefits, etc. So it's, it's 17 different organisations in essence. And the, uh, the, the, the key way in which we uh, uh, move through that is firstly we have a very clear vision and mission at a central level from Polycom, so everybody's aware of what our goals are, what our plans for the year are, there are regular frequent updates in terms of how we're performing as a business. So that gives everyone a consistent overview uh, of where we are. And then from a secondary point of view, what we try and do is, is uh, identify what things we need to do from a, a consistency perspective across the, the, the 17 territories. But equally, we also say, is it really necessary and do we need to take into account local differences 
uh, when we're actually uh, implementing certain policies and practices and so forth. Uh, and then the third way is all around the engagement piece. So it's how do you keep employees aware of what's going on? So you need robust internal communications. And again, working for a company like Polycom, where we've got the ability to have video conferencing and, and video streaming and recorded streamings and so forth, uh, we're, we're very good at communicating across the piece. So uh, there are frequent updates, there are quarterly business updates, there are town hall meetings, etc. And everybody's invited to join those. They can video in so they can see people live. And then just the final point I'll make is that from a management team perspective, uh, within EMEA, certainly within Polycom, um, although uh, we do have management, tem management team members in the UK, we're not UK centric. So we also have management team members in Germany, in France, in Netherlands, as well as the UK. So uh, we're seen as quite a cross-cultural management team as well, and that certainly helps. The key objective is one of growth, so uh, we've got a, uh, a very aggressive growth targets this year. Um, I'm not limited to say what they are at the moment, but it's well into double digits, let's put it that way. And so from an HR perspective, what we're currently doing, in fact I'm going to the US next week, is, is we're creating HR plans for 2010 and beyond, uh, which align with the, the business plans. So although the headline figure is we've got to increase our growth by X percent, um, the, the natural thought process beyond that is, what does that mean from an HR perspective? So from an organisation, we've got the right structure, we've got the right management team, we're in the right countries, uh, where's the opportunity? Then we need to look at our hiring plans, what sort of people do we need to be looking for? Where are they going to be based? Do we need to create new entities? Uh, then look at existing staff, uh, have they got the right skills? We need to go through a training and analysis process. Can we develop people through the ranks? What's our succession planning process looking like? And, and so forth. Um, and then um, th there's all sorts of engagement after that. So it's one thing as a management team deciding this is what we need to do, but then it's bringing the employee base along with us. So it's, it's looking at the internal communications implications of any planning which we do now. Uh, so the key challenge is defining what we're doing, what the HR plan is as a result of that, and then bringing the organisation along at the same time.